snow last night. We don't get snow that often in Mississippi, but let me tell you, when we do, it is really not that impressive. They did close the schools today, I guess because some of the bridges may ice over, but really all the roads are clear. We have a little dusting on the grass outside, and that is pretty much it. We have just been laying so much tile here lately in this house, so I thought I'd take a break just for a little bit and show you how to hang a door. If you've never hung a door before, it can seem a little bit daunting if you don't know the whole mechanics, how you put one in place. Uh, the biggest difficulty when hanging a door is hanging one by yourself. And just due to circumstance, sometimes I do have to hang them by myself. I've come up with a few little tips and tricks to kind of help you put this in place where you don't kill yourself trying to hang a heavy door, because these are solid core doors. If you have a hollow core door, they don't weigh very much, and it's not a big deal to hold one in place. I also have three tools that I use all the time when I'm hanging doors. I might not actually need them all on this one particular door, but I'm gonna show them all to you today. But if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'm actually gonna give one of those three tools away, uh, and I'll let you pick which one you get. But you have to stay tuned to find out how to get that tool. That's enough of me talking about it, let's just do it. You get a lot of differing opinions on the best method to actually hang a door up, whether you should attach the complete hinge all the way to the door, or if you should take the hinge apart, put part of it on the door jam and part of it on the door, or the complete opposite method would be to attach the complete hinge to the frame. I'm not sure that there's a right answer to that because they'll all work and I've done all three of them. It seems to me the easiest way is to attach the hinges to the door, attach the whole thing to the jam. But let me just show you instead of talking about it. A little tip I can give you to make your life easier when you're changing your hinges out is to make sure you get the right size hinge, of course, but also make sure you get the right radius. What I mean by radius is this corner here. This one actually has a quarter inch radius on it, and they're not all the same. Some of them have a completely square one, some of them are a little more rounded than this. But if you'll check what was originally on your door and find a race that's the same, it'll make replacing things a lot easier. As I mentioned before, there's three tools I use a lot when I'm hanging doors. They're not a have to have, but they are super handy when you're doing this. And the first one that I was gonna show you is this. It's an air shim. You may have seen something like this before. A lot of the services you see will come unlock your car if you lock your keys in your car. They'll wedge these in between the door and the frame of the car and you pump it up and it'll open the door just enough so they can reach in and unlock your door. But in construction, I use these a lot, especially when you're working by yourself. It'll help you uh, lift something into place without having somebody there helping you hold it. 
Uh, and it works really good on these doors. You can just slide it under the door itself and just use your foot to push the bulb here and lift the door up to where it needs to be to put your screws in. I don't normally put all three screws in to the door frame yet in case there's any adjustment that I'm gonna have to. I just put in like the top and the bottom one and leave the middle one open for the time being. Cause there's a good chance on most of these old houses that we work on, the door is not gonna seat in here perfectly. And if it doesn't, I can show you the other two tools I use all the time when I'm hanging doors. Before I put the last few screws in, let's just test and see if it shuts. It doesn't quite shut, and that is pretty common. You can see on this one, we have plenty of clearance at the top. It would close there if it wasn't for down here at the bottom. I mean, it will close, but you can see it is completely touching here. And eventually, even if it didn't drive you so crazy that you had to fix it, it's gonna rub the paint off on the door and the frame if you don't take care of that. I've got an alternative way to fix this and it's worked really well for me in the past. It utilizes one of the next two tools I'm gonna to show you that a lot of people have probably never even heard of. The next tool I wanna to show you that'll help you out with this is this. It looks kinda of like a crescent wrench, but it's actually called a knuckle bender. It works exactly like a crescent wrench. It has an adjustment on here that'll let you attach it onto the hinge. Uh, the biggest difference between this and a crescent wrench is the way it grabs onto it. See, it's got that opening there at the top. That fits perfectly on the knuckles of your hinge. What this does is, is you can take the pin out of the top of the hinge and adjust one side of the hinge. Let's say these are the three knuckles from the door side of the hinge, and these are the three from the frame side of the hinge. If you bend these out a little bit, it will pull that door in some, if that makes sense. It's made by a company called Fastcap. I have never really seen one of these in our local hardware stores like Lowe's and Home Depot, and I ordered this one off Amazon. And I'll actually put a link in the description below for all these tools if you wanna check them out and order them. Uh, but like I said before, I will be giving one of these away. One little word of the wise I'll mention here is I would do this sparingly. I wouldn't go crazy bending this one way or the other because you'll end up with a door that I always kind of refer to as sprung, which means like there's so much tension on the door that it'll want to fling one way or the other. It'll constantly want to open itself or close itself uh, because there's so much tension on that hinge where it's bound. You just want to do like little micro adjustments to get this thing to line up. This tool also has this little feature to it here. It's this little pin that folds away. And what this is for is for uh, using it to, it slides up and down too. Use it to tap out your hinge pins when you need to remove them before you start bending. Conceptually, that's a great idea. But from my experience, this part is crap. The tool itself is good, this is not. If they use a better attachment system on it, I would love it. It's nice to have this on here because I'm constantly looking for a nail set to tap out the hinge pins before and to have this right on the tool you're fixing to be using was a nice feature. But the back side of it, you can see it's already come off there and just with a little pressure, this thing will completely pop out of here. You can see it'll just come right off and you'll just end up losing it. And especially when you're using it, tapping something on, this thing falls off constantly. It's a good idea, but <laughs> that this little attachment point here definitely needs some work. And if FastCap sees this, Fix that and your tool would be perfect. Uh, but yeah, that part's crap. But because that feature was so bad on this tool, it led me to purchasing this other tool, uh, which is the third one I wanted to show you. It's a hinge pin remover, if you can see. And it's made by Spring Tools. <clears throat> it's kind of similar to a center punch I've got. Oh, with the, so on that one, you works kind of like a ballpoint pin. You would click the middle of it and it would fire the pin down the middle which would punch the metal so your drill bit would start easier in that point. This one works differently though. You actually pull this one back and it works like a little spring hammer. It taps the other pin, which will knock your hinge pin out. 
Uh, and it actually came with another center punch uh, that works the same way as this one as opposed to the clicking kind that I had before. It's a neat little tool that a lot of people probably have never even heard of. And typically what I would say most people do is they'll just use a flathead screwdriver. They'll put it under the head of that hinge pin and they'll just take their hammer and they'll try to tap it out just like you're trying to remove a nail. And up here, I mean, it's a little bit easier. When you get under the bottom, you just don't have a lot of room between the floor and the top of that pin. So if you have your screwdriver here, you've only got just this little bit of room to tap this. And if you were using a traditional nail set at the bottom, like if it was around the size of this one, you see like you've only got just a, a couple of inches to tap this out. But the way these spring tools work is they're hammerless. It's all built in, so you don't have to use the hammer to tap this out. You just set it under there, let it go, and it'll take the hinge right out. And even if you're not doing this work professionally, and you're just a homeowner doing some DIY projects, I can still see where this would be a good thing to have around the house because it doesn't take up very much space. It's not gonna break the bank, and it will just save you a lot of time and headache, especially like you've already painted. It'll prevent you from scuffing up your fresh paint on your door jams and your door swinging a hammer next to it. As soon as I pop that pin out, the door immediately settled in a spot, which makes it now easy to open and close and it's not hanging anymore, which is good. Sometimes you really have to work on these to get them to adjust right, but this one just needs a little minor tweaking at the bottom. And since I know now that it's sitting in a spot where it opens and closes easy, all I have to do is adjust the hinge side that's attached to the door frame to match where it's sitting on the door itself. As you can see here, the odd number of pins, one, three, and five, those are the ones that are attached to the frame itself, and the even ones, two and four, those are attached to the door. And you can see when I pull the pin out, the door kind of settled in a little bit, which makes it where it'll open and close easy over here now, and it's not hung anymore. If I pull this odd one out here on five, pull it back up to match two and four, so this is a straight line, so to see how it's kind of kicked out right there, that's what's binding the door. So if I use the knuckle bender and just pull this in a little bit and put the pin back in, that should fix the door where it'll open and close easy. I don't know how clearly that's showing up, but you can see like I just did a little bit of adjustment here so that these are closer. I mean, it still sticks out a little bit. Like I said earlier, you don't want to tweak these too much because then the door will be sprung. I'm gonna pop the pin back in and see if the door still opens and closes. Just that little bit of adjustment's all it took. You can see the door doesn't hang now. I do start to put the doorknobs on all these in the house. I may save that for another episode. I think I'm just gonna make this one kind of short and sweet because I do start to repeat that same process I did on that door on every door in the house, including the closet doors. Because we're swapping out all the hinges for the satin nickel ones instead of the older brass ones that had the paint on them. To be eligible for one of these tools, all you have to do is three things for me. One, subscribe to the channel. You should be doing that anyway, because you're gonna miss out on a lot of content if you don't. Two, please like the video, because it really helps out our channel. It helps on the algorithm of YouTube so more people see our videos. And three, I need you to comment down below which of the three tools that you want. That's it. And we'll do a random drawing based on those three criteria, and we'll announce the winner in the next video. I think Amanda just got here with our lunch, so that's gonna be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. I was just finishing this up. Do you want to add anything to the video? No. Pin to it.